It's round the next bend, up a sunny dirt road. Just ask the nearest caterpillar or toad for the home of the bears, where Pa, Ma, and the cubs are as snug as can be in their cozy, warm, comfortable, split-level tree. Just at the moment, inside their quaint home. Hey, Ma, what's that? Yeah, what are you doing? Shh. Ma's reading the harvest honeycomb. Honeycomb dribble, honeycomb drip. What lies ahead? A handsome stranger? Money? A trip. Grizzly grum, grizzly growl. What holdeth the future? Tell me, honeycomb. Tell me now. The legend. The legend of Big Paw. Oh, Big Paw. Big Paw? The story they told when I was a lass. The Thanksgiving legend. Is it coming to pass? What's Big Paw? What's the legend? The Thanksgiving legend is simple enough. It says, if the bears become selfish and greedy, and unkind to the needy, and insufficiently thankful for nature's great bounty, that monster of monsters, Big Paw, would come and gobble up bear country, county by county. Big Paw? <laughs> stuff and nonsense. Nonsense and stuff. Unmitigated <laughs> piffle. Pure bear country guff. up ahead, just over this rise, is a glorious sight for your young or old eyes. It's bear country, a really and truly remarkable place, ancestral home of the great grizzly race. Oops! I told your mother to fix that stair. <sighs> It's not easy being a father bear. Bye-bye, Mama. Bye-bye. Bye, Mom. Bye. Now, Papa Q Bear is a bear for all seasons. But fall is his favorite, and for the best of all reasons. Cubs? I'm a bear for holidays. I like them all. Whether in spring, summer, winter, or fall. And your pa has impeccable holiday habits. On Easter Sunday, I make way for rabbits. And say a small poem to spring and rebirth. On Earth Day, my friends, I cherish the earth. On Christmas, of course, I think of others. Nature's creatures, great and small. Fellow creatures, one and all. <laughs> On April Fools, I play practical jokes. On unsuspecting, innocent folks. Now look out behind you! <laughs> On Arbor Day, I talk to the trees. Hi, trees. But the very best day of the year, if you please, the one that for me is really the winner, is Thanksgiving. Why? Thanksgiving dinner. 
Let's see now. We'll start off with bread. And honey. Of course. Well, then an order of radish. Yes, we have come just in time for the Bears' Thanksgiving. The day they give thanks for their standard of living. And what a standard it is. Why, in bear country, grapes spit out their own seeds. Snap beans and tomatoes pull their own weeds. Fishing worms willingly hop onto hooks for trout who can't wait to get out of their brooks. Some French fried beans are generous scoop. Some fish and some fowl. A little bit of slice of pate. Yes, from hollow to hill, from glenlock to glade, the bears of bear country had it made. Except for one thing. That's right. The legend. The Thanksgiving legend that said if the bears became selfish and greedy and unkind to the needy and insufficiently grateful for nature's great bounty, that Big Paul would come and gobble up bear country county by county. Of course, it's only a legend. And not all legends are true. But some of them are. Big Paw! 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 Um... Big Paw? Big Paw! If a monster should come, what would the bears do? They surely did seem to be tempting the fates. With all of this stress on fences and gates, and all of this worry about what was theirs, with nary a thought for their fellow bears. And as we have seen in Papa Bear's case, all Thanksgiving meant was feeding his face. Say, I almost forgot my favorite treat. No ifs, ands, or buts. We know, Papa. Mix nuts. Hey, let's get Pop to mix nuts. Okay. Now, Mama Bear has always laid great stress on the old-fashioned notion of thankfulness for her cubs, for her home, for her comfortable chair. She was even thankful for old Papa Bear. We're thankful for our family, trusted friends, home sweet tree. We're thankful, which is why we stress, thankful, thankful, Yes, 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 we stress thankful, thankful, thankfulness. We're thankful for our meals each day, for work to do, for time to play. We're thankful, which is why we stress.
Big paw. Big paw. Hmm. This hedgehog here has official word that he heard from a turtle who got it from a bird that the Thanksgiving legend is coming true. That the selfishness debt is coming due. The situation is grave. Eyes like bonfires. A mouth like a cave. Ninety feet tall, breathes fire and smoke with terrible teeth and an arm like an oak. And now I'm informed by this little hedgehog. He's just minutes away in sinister bog. And while the grown-up bears were working themselves into a tizzy, Cub's brother and sister were keeping quite busy. Seeking Pa's favorite, no ifs, ands, or buts. His favorite treat, mixed nuts. And there they go, into the place where the mixed nuts grow. Into the drifting, shifting fog. The murk and the mire of sinister bog. Is Big Bog coming? And if he is, what will he do? Perhaps he's just p p passing through. Now, just a minute. The thing to do is use our heads and think things through. Yeah, Mama's right. Now, what do we know? We know the legend is coming true. We know it from highly reliable sources. So the thing we must do is organize the Bear Country Forces. Yeah! Village Square, with the full cooperation of every bear, Operation Big Paw was well underway. Big Paw might be coming, but he might also rue the day. Forward, bears! Not the old cannon. It's bound to burst. Oh, never fear, Ma. We're testing it first. At this point, Ma decided to have her say. Now, don't you think you're getting a little carried away? 
organizing forces on the unsupported word of a crazy little hedgehog who got it from a turtle, who heard it from a bird. How do we know this stranger is a threat? None of us has even seen or heard him yet. Besides, what is a stranger? A stranger's just somebody you don't already know. He could be a friend. With that kind of friend, who needs a foe? He could be a prince. He could be a schmo. Or just a regular sort of a joke. A stranger's just somebody whom you haven't yet met. Yeah. So don't make a fuss, it's not etiquette to come on, get set, try not to forget. A stranger's just somebody whom you haven't yet met. A prince or a schmo or a regular Joe, a stranger is just somebody new. Ma's got a point. She could be right. I'll go up for a look while there's still light. <laughs> So giving hardly a thought to safety or danger, Pa went up the mountain to personally check out the Thanksgiving stranger. Now, the cubs knew their papa was brave and strong, but not much of a climber, so they tagged along. It was echoing ledge that Big Paw was on, and each terrible roar was just an amplified yawn. It had been quite a day, and Big Paw was feeling the need to retire. He stood up and stretched and stoked his fire, which cast a great shadow upon the wall. A shadow at least 90 feet tall so that when they finally reached Echoing Ledge and Papa Bear cautiously looked over the edge, what he saw was the shadow, not Big Paw himself, calmly stoking his fire on his hideaway shelf. He is 90 feet tall, breathing fire and smoke, with eyes like bonfires and an arm like an oak. But Papa... Hush, hush. There's no time to fuss. We've got to get him before he gets us. But Papa! So, Pa got down the mountain the best way he knew how. Assemble all bears, and I mean now! <laughs> and bring all those skunk bombs and gimmicks and widgets. This guy makes King Kong look like singer's midgets. Eyes like bonfires and really large. Bugler, sound the charge! Where are those cubs? So up they went, each armed for the raid. Papa was wielding a beehive grenade. Up the mountain they went. It was quite a parade. While up on the mountain, the cause of the flap was cozying down for a bit of a nap. When he heard a strange sound, it was still far away and not very loud. Of course, what it was, was the roar of a crowd. Now, Big Paul was no mental wizard, but he was getting a message down deep in his gizzard that trouble was coming. So he scratched his head and started his fuzzy old noodle a humming. 
and using his powerful arms and shoulders, built him a tower, a tower of boulders. If those bears were to charge up out of the valley, they'd be just like pins in a bowling alley. But those bears kept on coming, faster and faster. There was simply no way to avoid disaster. But then, at the very last instant, before the rocks fell, there came through the din a cub's high-pitched yell. Wait! It was Sister. Wait! Sister cried. The rock tower teetered. It started to slide. Brother and sister were in terrible danger, and there was no one to help them, except for the stranger. Then, with the bears looking on in amazement and shock, Big Paw held back that tower of rock, and with the great strength in that mighty right arm, he rescued small brother and sister from harm. You could have heard a pin drop in the valley that day. That's when the cubs decided to have their say. Big Paw's our friend. He's very nice. He saved us before. Now he's rescued us twice. And he saved us from ourselves. Thanks, Big Paw. That's right. Got your mixed nuts. Yes, it was quite a Thanksgiving. No ifs, ands, or buts. <laughs> <laughs>